Tell me when you think we're ready. Karen. I think we should get going, Mary. Okay. Oh. This meeting is called to order in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Notice of this meeting was sent to the Home News Tribune, the Star Ledger, and the Highland Park Planet on December 4th, 2020, and was posted on the borough website at www.hpboro.com and on the bulletin board of the Borough Hall, 221 South Fifth Avenue, Highland Park, New Jersey, on December 4th, 2020, and has remained continuously posted uh, as required by law. As mayor, I will preside over this meeting and may interrupt, warn, or terminate a participant statement or participation in the virtual meeting if the participant statement does not adhere to the three minutes provided to each participant for public comment or the statement is abusive, obscene, or irrelevant. Um, and so um, we can go right into the meeting. Um, can I have uh, a roll call, please? Mayor Burlamantler? Here. Councilwoman Canavera? Here. Councilman Fine? Councilwoman Foster? Here. Councilman George? It looks like Councilman George is in the um, attendees. The attendees. Hand I'll up. promote him. Thank you for catching that. Let me see. Councilman George, at least you raised his hand. <laughs> Did he come in? There he is. There he is. Phil? Uh, I'm here. Ah, great. Okay. Good. Sorry Councilman about that. Hale? Here. Councilwoman Kim Chohan. Here. Special <clears throat> Counsel Bauman. Here. Uh, Planner Jim Constantine. Uh, Borough Administrator Hover. Here. Okay. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of August 25th, 2020, regular and executive se session? So move. So move. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Councilwoman Canavera? Yes. Councilwoman Foster? Yes. Councilman George? Yes. Councilman Hale? Yes. Councilwoman Kim Chohan? Yes. Okay. May I have a motion to accept the uh, regular and executive session minutes of October 13th, 2020? So moved. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Canavera? Yes. Councilwoman Foster? Yes. Councilman George? Yes. Councilman Hale? Yes. Councilwoman Kim Chohan? Yes. Okay, may I have a motion to accept the um, minutes of um, the regular session of November 17th, 2020? So moved. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Canavera? Yes. Councilwoman Foster? Yes. Councilman George? Yes. Councilman Hale? Yes. Councilwoman Ken Chohan? Yes. All right, it appears we have one discussion item for this evening, and that is the Downtown Redevelopment Status Report. Um, I'm going to ask if that is going to be discussed by the borough administrator or Councilman Hale. I was prepared to speak to it, but I'm happy to let Matt, maybe you fill me in, fill in if I miss anything. So I'm good. Fair enough, you go for it. Uh, just briefly, I wanted to use the opportunity of this meeting before the holidays hit um, and before the new year, just to brief council as to where we are um, kind of on our uh, planning process that we've, we've undertaken. Uh, as you know, we had the three stakeholder sessions. We had the uh, November, I believe, 17th redevelopment meeting, uh, the same as this, this evening, dedicated to the plan and we presented and took input at that meeting. Um, and then since that time, um, the planning team and myself and, and Councilman Hale to a large degree have been uh, fielding uh, comments and questions and ideas from the public 
that we've received as well as and feeding them into kind of our thinking for the draft plan that's underway. Um, we've been having meetings with property owners in adjacent areas, uh, the most recent being, uh, for example, with Provident Bank earlier today to kind of talk to them about issues that are real specific to their properties. And we have a few more slated uh, for the coming week. Um, so that's, uh, I just wanted you to be aware of that and to reiterate kind of the timeline that I explained at the last meeting, uh, still holding in the sense that we are looking at adoption in 2021 with tentative meeting dates because we haven't firmed up our schedule. I believe um, the clerks are in the process of doing that in advance of our reorg meeting in January. However, if, if it goes as, as I expected to, uh, we'd be looking at a, the uh, a draft plan for review uh, in early January with the hope that we could, uh, but prior to the January 12th, uh, redevelopment meeting, that's again, assuming that is the date we land on officially. Um, we would share that obviously with the council, but also with the public in advance of that meeting to give folks a chance to review and uh, um, in advance and then give some comments at that meeting. Uh, we would then look to um, a February planning board meeting after we would introduce and get, get review from the planning board. Right now, that looks like it would be February 11th, but again, those schedules are still on being determined. And then with potential adoption uh, in March by council at a, at a council meeting. So I just wanted to be clear in, in part because I know um, we've shifted a little bit uh, in response to um, the, the input we've gotten and some of the other things. And I wanted to make sure everybody was uh, was uh, kind of in the loop. I wasn't going to get into any kind of weeds. I just wanted to use it as a, get a, just make sure everybody knew where we were, if there were any questions, but um, maybe Councilman Hale, if you have anything to add to that before we, you know, let people weigh in. Oh, you're muted. You're muted, Matt. <laughs> I always do that. Um, uh, uh, I don't, I don't have um, anything to add other. I think that's a good summary and overview. Um, you know, there's been uh, I think a robust discussion. And as, as Terry said, there's several other opportunities for continued discussion um, uh, leaning up, up through March with, uh, with this entity, with the council, with the planning board, um, and then the same sort of stakeholder meetings that have been um, going on throughout. So, um, so I think that's, uh, that's where we are in this process. Um, I don't think there's anything else I need to add. Joe, is there anything else procedurally that you'd mention at this point? No, I think we're on target for you know plans being prepared and moving forward next year. Great, great. Okay, then moving on, uh, we're about to go into our public comment session. Each speaker has three minutes, but may comment on any topic. The borough clerk will monitor the time and will offer a 30 second warning and then indicate when three minutes has lapsed. The session will wrap up by 9 p.m. If you would like to speak, please raise your hand by pressing star nine on your phone keypad or um, select the raise hand button on the application. The borough administrator will announce your turn by reading your name or the last four digits of your phone number. Please begin by telling us your first and last name as well as your address. Um, I believe that Jennifer, uh, our, our uh, clerk, is going to be helping with the timing so that we stay on time here. Um, again, if you would like to speak about a topic, um, please press star nine or the raise hand button now. And then borough administrator, if you would uh, just announce people as they are ready. Sure, I have a couple of hands. Uh, looks like first up is Peter Spool. Um, go ahead and state your name and address for the record. Um, yes, I'm Peter Spool. I live at 146 Graham Street on the south side. Um, I, I raised some questions last time and the, the, uh, maybe it was the meeting on the 17th of November and they, they really weren't answers. I, I, I think it's important to think about some of these things and include them in the plan. 
you know, first of all, uh, since you're talking about adding rateables, I think it's important to have an estimate of the increased annual tax revenue in terms of dollars and in percent of current tax revenues to show the amount of um, advantage there. Um, I also think when we're talking about affordable units, uh, people would like to know the range and the minimum number of affordable units that uh, you're willing to settle for when talking to contractors and builders. Um, third, um, it's important to know what kind of, what, what uh, level of um, income groups you're targeting. Are, are any of these units gonna be luxury? Are they only gonna be middle and low income units? Um, that's important for the public to know in evaluating whether this is a good plan or not. The, de the devil is in the details always. Um, lastly, there, there are some other issues. Um, the parking you say is going to be at this parking deck that's a thousand feet from some of the units. That's a long way. You know, I, I think one block is a reasonable amount to be able to walk. I think we're talking 300 to, to 500 feet there. Um, it's also important that uh, if you don't allow for any parking spaces on site, uh, uh, even for handicapped people, what you're doing is you are discriminating against handicapped people. You can't actually do that by federal regulation. Um, lastly, I'd like to know um, about any traffic studies that have been run and what the results of those are, especially when you're talking about this parking deck, but, but also about some of the other units. So Peter, um, I'm going to address one of the things um, that you asked, and that is um, the affordable housing units that would be in any of these developments. We actually have an ordinance that requires a certain number of affordable units. Um, and I always get the two, um, two percentages uh, mixed up. Um, I, there's if they're for sale units, in other words, condos or, co or cooperatives, and the percentage for administrator is 20%. 20%. And if they're rental units, the percentage is 15%. That is not to say that there won't be any more than that, but there certainly cannot be less. Well, so um, tell me what you're shooting so Peter, for. Just, since let me, just let me finish, please. Go ahead. Um, uh, so that's number one. So anything that gets built in Highland Park has those requirements that they must meet. As far as all the other questions that you raise, um, uh, and, and I'm going to quote um, both um, our attorney Joe Bauman and uh, Councilman Hale when I say this, we are, these are not concrete plans that a developer has put together for us. This is a vision from a hundred feet high. And so um, right now we don't have um, a developer that is saying, I am going to build uh, 40 units on this location and there are uh, going to be all five bedrooms or whatever. Um, so I want you to keep that in mind and, and um, uh, Joe, if you have a very elegant way of trying to explain this, I know um, it's, it's, some, it's something that, you know, is, is hard to grasp at this point because we haven't really done a vision in quite a few years. So Joe, could you explain this situation, please? Yeah, sure, Mayor, I'd love to. And I, I absolutely appreciate that this can be frustrating, but it's 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 a linear path and it's a process. And we're really just asking the public to engage in the process, not a result. The result is generally described as economic development, downtown Island Park. That's the result, that's, the, that's where we're heading. And how we're gonna get there um, remains to be seen, remains to be written. We have, we have ideas where a parking garage might go, for example. We don't have an agreement with that property owner to put a parking garage there today. Uh, we have ideas about how much density could go on the, a particular site. We don't have the developer prepared to build any of that. So we're just trying to, you know, again, outline a, a plan, a concept, some thoughts that I can tell you with absolute certainty 
will change, will evolve, will take turns, will take bends, will take detours. But the goal will be to generate economic development in downtown Highland Park. And so this process is uh, beginning now. Now, people will suggest traffic studies and fiscal impact analysis. These are all things that are expensive, cost a lot of money. And when done in the context of uh, a complete unknown about what we're going to build there, you know, I think another group of people would say that's a complete waste of public funds. Um, so let's let's embrace the process. Let's take the public participation that we're doing. Let's all agree that we want to improve economic development in Island Park. And um, I can again, I can tell you, there's so much to be figured out. We're so close to the we're at the infancy of this process. This is years, not months, to get through. Um, and we're going to answer. And those questions will get answered either. To, to the degree that's acceptable to the governing body or not uh, along the way. And, and in piecemeal, frankly, we will probably figure out one particular site before we do another. It won't be comprehensive. Um, but, but the mission, the goal, the plan, the direction, which I think everyone's behind, is economic development in downtown Highland Park. Um, and this is our general outline of how to get to that goal. But the journey is, we haven't, we don't even know what states we're going to do, go through to get there. We don't, we just don't know so much about the journey yet. We're beginning the journey. We're going to answer the questions as we go along, but it's really a process we're trying to have people embrace as opposed to a result at this point, other than our broad goals of creating economic development, providing affordable housing, jumpstarting uh, the, the downtown development so that stores can be open, restaurants can be filled, people are en embracing the downtown. So again it's a process a journey so many unanswered questions today that we can't give you i recognize it's frustrating they'll come in time um and, and we just ask people to continue to particip participate and listen and challenge mayor i have a recommendation then when it when this comes to be voted on i think it's very important before that to communicate to the residents just what is actually being voted on Mm -hmm. and what things are still up in the air that 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 this is not anything where you are agreeing that you're going to build a particular thing on a particular site but just um, a vision of what you hope to do in the future on in these spots because i don't think people understand that right Right, and, and that's a very good point. And, and, and we will certainly make it clearer before the vote. That's you can do a much better job of communicating that. Okay. Than has Thank been you. done. Thank you. Okay, Terry, anybody else? We got a couple others, hold on one second. Looks like Carl Prey is up next. I'm gonna allow you to talk. Please uh, unmute yourself and state your name and address. Uh, Carl Prey at 317 Denison, and I'm uh, putting... Okay, it's Mary Forsberg, actually. <laughs> I'm not going to let Carl waste uh, 50 seconds of my minutes. I think that this, this proposal sets a very low bar for development. I am surprised that you are willing to talk to uh, Provident National Bank, but you're not willing to talk to any of the neighbors in the area that you are talking about citing a parking garage. And quite frankly, if you put in a plan that you're going to site a parking garage in my neighborhood, the value of my property immediately goes down. So you need to take that into account when you talk about rateables in downtown um, Highland Park. I think you are being very fast and loose with the neighbors who live around all of these things that you're proposing. I also think I have asked for a lot of research and I have seen nothing. Um, uh, Matt Hale gave me some examples that made absolutely no sense of Seattle, Missouri, um, no cities, no towns like Highland Park that have done anything like this. There is no impact on the schools for the possibly 450 new apartments that are being developed in Highland Park, both on River Road, these things, and um, over in um, Buck Woods. Um, you've done no market analysis of whether anybody needs any apartments. I think there's a lot of vacancy in New Brunswick of some very nice apartment buildings. You've done no parking analysis, which um, Phil George um, talked about. He's apparently showed it to the mayor, but I haven't seen it. You've done nothing about finances. And frankly, I'm really worried about you buying all these properties, buying properties and flipping them. That has happened in Highland Park before and not successfully. Um, 
there in the 2019 um, uh, reports that were done, absolutely none of the um, hyperlinks in that report work. And there's no place on the borough website that you can actually find them. 3% um, of the people you talk about the survey that you did, 3% of Highland Park residents were in that survey. It's a very small survey of um, people's impressions. And I don't, I don't know anybody that responded to that, that survey or knew about it. And you didn't ask them whether you'd like to have a parking garage in Highland Park, which I think is pretty sad. Um, you uh, haven't done any analysis about what a four to five story building would mean in terms of a volunteer fire department. And I got the department's having some problems. We haven't done anything about the property assessments. In fact, assessments in Highland Park are way behind schedule. There are lots of new buildings that have not been properly assessed. And how about the new public employees? If you have a parking garage, you're gonna create a parking authority in Highland Park to manage it. Are you gonna hire paid fire department, uh, paid fire department employees? You're gonna to have to put more police um, in the town for the festival time. My neighbors and I will be calling the police if people are throwing up in front of our houses. Thank, thank you, Mary. Okay, is there someone else? Yep, hold on. Uh, looks like someone named Debbie. If you could state your full name and your address, please. Hi, my name is Debbie Petrisco and I live at 113 North 3rd Ave. And I am for a vibrant downtown that reflects the personality and uniqueness of Highland Park. But what has been proposed in these four tracks seems overwhelming in a few ways. I'm having trouble understanding why the borough would purchase properties. Doesn't that make us the developer in a sense because we, the town, would be selecting which properties are bought and sold. I don't know about the nature of using taxpayer money that way. You have shown slides of a plan that you are supporting. So it seems like any interested developer could then just purchase the properties and develop them without involvement of our tax money up until the point of going to the planning board. Since 2005, Block 173 has been talked about. Why not start with that, have some success, build on that, and then move on. And in those plans, it does mention parking below or behind buildings. The other overwhelming aspect of this is the elimination of the town square idea and the current treatment of the farmer's market site. In the 2019 land use plan element mentions, uh, prepare a parking management plan. Everyone in town has a different view on parking. Parking has been discussed with these four tracks, but not holistically for the town. I'll um, echo what Mary just said about, are we gonna do resident stickers? Does this create a whole nother layer of management and enforcement? Um, five story buildings will alter the feel and character of Highland Park. I just don't know if that will make like a canyon feel when you're going down Raritan Ave, if you have them on both sides of the street, such a condensed area. Besides changing the character of Highland Park, there are practical concerns, just like what Mary said with public works and uh, the traffic on the side streets. Right now, when there's arts in the park or there's something where Raritan Ave is blocked off, then cars go down Denison. So if track D were allowed to go forward, that would be even more traffic on that street. Um, and track D, I don't know where that came from. When you read everything um, that's on the website historically, that area has never been labeled in need of redevelopment, whatever. Um, I just think it's a lot to take in and maybe start with a smaller bite. And I still am against the parking deck. And I would like to know if any other flat surface borough owned spaces have been considered for parking solutions. Thank you. Okay. Um, Terry? Yep, just give me a second. We've got a couple more hands. This one's a phone number. It's ending in 4445. I've unmuted you. Please state your name uh, and address for the record. Hi, Lois Webbing here, North 2nd Avenue. Hello. Yes, 
Hi. We all want a vibrant Highland Park. We want less taxes. We have dreams. But we don't want to hear of a metropolis going in, in dub, twin towers here, there, and, and uh, three, four, three spaces, locations. Can't you cut that down? Start with one, let's say, on uh, Block 173, which is my block, the gun shop. So you put one apartment there, let the parking be for the apartment at Bergen's, and when that apartment is so filled, you can then put your second tower at Bergen's or Bergen's and Ubreeze. How do we thank Ubreeze? They've been here 65, 70 years, almost four generations, and we're kicking them out. We're buying them out. Did you save a building? And maybe you did. You didn't save McKinney or something similar so they can stay in town so they don't have to move from our area? And with a survey of 3 4% of the population, you're hearing it's not sufficient. I don't think it's going to mean anything to you. But why not ask for suggestions? What can be improved over this plan or into this plan if um, other people – I mean, you have plaques in the Burr Hall that says we have two Nobel Prize winners I mean, to draw people here or Reds Marina or something going on. You have visible eyesores with bumpy streets and sidewalks that are still in need of work near the Bartle School, um, Irving School, pardon me, in the Triangle. And our fire department, I'm told, is hemorrhaging volunteers, and I hope I'm wrong. So why not go a smaller, and especially not five stories, three stories maybe overlooking the avenue with two stories in the backyard, shorter in the backyard, so the neighbors have sunlight. It's too intense what your what your pie in the sky plan is, and to invite a developer with such intensity, as I said, this is a metropolis. If somebody wants to get rid of their land there near uh, Charlie Brown's parking lot, they can donate it for a park for a, a town square, in memory, name it in memory of their deceased relatives. It doesn't have to be a parking deck. If you do one building at a time smaller at some of these places, which then can be constructed. I think, I don't, know, I don't know if we have much chance of changing anything, especially looking at the last page of this land use element plan that talks about possible potential amendments to have um, elimination of, of public notice through sm uh, minor site plans, granted, not major. But I think, please, people, if you want to stay in... in to council and on the redevelopment, please. We want our taxes lowered. True. Time. Thank you. Thank you, Lois. Um, uh, Councilman Hale, you looked like you wanted to say something. Did Did you want to speak? I, I just wanted to make it clear that there is no plan to take Mr. Ubri's lot by any mechanism. If there's a discussion that we have, if there is a agreement that is is reached. Um, with them, that's an agreement, but it, there's, 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 I just wanted to make sure that there's, we have not put that in a place where we are saying we're going to condemn Mr. Irby. They've been here for 40 years. They're, um, you know, good, good folks. I've talked to Mr. Irby on a number of different occasions. Um, yes, obviously we would love if, if that worked, but we have no plans to, take that property. And so when I when I hear that that's being out there, I just want to correct that, that that's not part of this plan. Um, that is part of a vision. And again, the the vision of this is is really as as we've said again and again, is that this is the the, the frame of the details and the details that you're asking about and the details that you're looking for, there will be not only the public comment prior to this this redevelopment plan but then down the road the idea of um of, of other specific redevelopments will go through a very similar process of public comment where there will be um the number of affordable housing units the size of the units the places they're going to park all of those types of things when there is a specific plan um either for one of the units all of the units all of the the um taken together or taken individually, all of which are, are, are still possible. Um, 
those are when those details um, are, are taken. So I, I, I again, I, I understand that this is um, for many people a, 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 a big step and it is a big step. I'm not saying that it's not. And, I, and we are learning from the comments that we're getting from people and doing our best to provide as, as information as, as, as best we can. I just, sometimes in the, the discussion, things like saying we're gonna take Mr. Ubri's place um, is, is, is thrown out there as if it's a fact and it's just not. Um, and so I just felt the need to sort of correct that. Thank you. Okay, Terry, anybody else? Yes. Uh, Melanie McDermott, you're next. Please state your name and address, please. Hi, uh, I'm Melanie McDermott. I live at 330 South Third Avenue uh, here in town. And um, I didn't expect this extra meeting. So I'm really glad for the opportunity to just throw out a few questions and concerns. Um, I appreciate the economic and share economic development goal, the 10,000 foot approach, but I think it would be very confidence building to understand what gets locked, might get locked in at what stage of the process and to understand, for example, certain decisions like purchases of property, certain decisions like what sorts of incentives or tax breaks might be offered to certain developers to make the whole package work will get locked in at some point between where we are now and the individual site approvals. When will the public have a chance to say, to, to, to weigh in? I'd like to ask about the planning board meeting because I understand the planning board would vote on uh, whether or not this plan is consistent with the master plan. To my mind, there are a few ways in which it, it is not. I'm sure a case could be made, but Certainly with respect to the importance uh, to the residents of a central uh, down, you know, downtown with a town center, it flies and it's going in the opposite direction of that. It's a parking deck, not a walking town in the center of town. So those are just some concerns. And then I guess also linked to this procedural and time sequencing thing is can someone, oh, I guess I, well, I'll ask a question, but also make a statement that I feel that the case has not been made why the four tracks are inextricably linked. Um, others have spoken to this, but um, in my view quickly, I think A and B are, tracks A and B are no brainers. They've long been on board. I understood that the uh, tract A owner, the major one had looked at on-site parking as part of her proposal like ages ago. So um, the borough needs to make the case to the town why C and D have to be linked. C means taking away our farmer's market, um, sub note to that. Um, it, I would oppose this plan with all my heart and soul if the, if, if the festival street could not be a, linked to it in a way such that North Third were permanently set off from tra traffic. So I would oppose it if, you know, if those particular features weren't in place, you've already heard how unpopular- 30 seconds. Even the festival street is with uh, folks on North Third, so I'm I'm worried about it getting picked away. And finally, this plan needs to be net revenue positive to the town, as we all know. And I haven't heard anything about assessments about the number of school children that are likely to move in, and what will that mean for the capacity of our schools. So I haven't left much time for answers, but those are all concerns I have. Thank you, Melanie. I, I want to address the last thing that you raised first. Um, and that is the schools, um, as we've done with any development that comes into the borough, at least since I've been mayor, is um, we stay in touch with the, with the um, school board and the superintendent of schools to get an idea of how the num anticipated number of children from any development might impact our schools. It is my understanding at this point, having had a recent conversation with um, the school board and, um, and um, Superintendent Taylor, that there is capacity still at the school for, um, ch with that, for new children, more children. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the numbers with me today, um, but uh, anything that we do would include a discussion with the schools. Net positivity is always what we are looking for. Um, again, um, at, at this point, without um, having the details on 
you know, how many units per, per location, are they for sale units, are they rental units, all of the details that will come later on in this process. Um, it's uh, a bit difficult to anticipate um, revenues um, uh, on an ongoing basis. Um, does anybody else want to talk about anything? Oh, the one, uh, one other thing I do want to make clear is that we are work, if we move and have that um, borough square at North, um, North, Fourth, at, is it Fourth or Third? I always get that. Third. At North Third Avenue, um, we will do whatever we can to find a way to, to keep that street close to traffic, and that will include working with the DOT. Um, anybody else want to add anything to help uh, address some of Me uh, Melanie's concerns? Mayor, just let me go, and then I have to jump off this call. I apologize. But let me uh, assure Melanie uh, a couple things. One, we haven't even drafted the plan, right? So this is these are pictures so far. That's all they are. So our planner is drafting a plan for each of these sites. Um, we're going to try and roll out the plans for these different sites, but they're not necessarily tied to one another. Um, as described, the, the, what we call the Zappian site could be developed perhaps on its own. We just have to make sure that uh, to the extent that they're going to have the offsite parking, we've accounted for that somehow temporarily or permanently. So why those sites are linked are primarily because of parking, the ability, the desire to have offsite parking to maximize development to increase the number of wallets in the downtown. Um, in terms of the process, once the plan's drafted in 2021, we're gonna uh, introduce the plan and then that plan will go to the planning board Well, they'll comment on it as described, re reflecting on both whether it complies with the master plan and give us any other comments they, will, they would like. And then the governing body would approve those uh, plan or plans. We haven't even firmly set whether we're gonna have one plan or four, frankly, uh, all still to be determined. After all that process is done, and now we have the zoning in place, our current expectation is the public lot, the lots owned by us, we're going to we're going to uh, put out into the public domain as a competitive process for developers to build on those sites, and we're going to have an RFP that will define what we want there, and uh, that'll and the developers may bid for uh, incentives as described. They may ask for you know different uh, components, but we through that competitive process, we'll be able to pick and choose what we want to happen on the sites that we control, um, the sites that we don't control, which is primarily the, the where the parking garage, we have a negotiation that hasn't even really begun with that property owner to figure out how that might work. We've generally spoken to the property owners over there. They certainly have seen what's happening in the public, um, but we haven't really have a lot of in-depth and that still has to happen. So um, that that's the process as we see it and the public's ability to weigh in there's going to be a dozen, if not more, public meetings between now and when we actually have a project where the public will be able to weigh in on every aspect, financial, school children, uh, design, traffic, uh, you sort of name it as we go in the process. Um, so with that, Mayor, I have to jump. I apologize. Thank you very much, Joe. I appreciate it. Okay, Terry, is there someone else on board? Uh, there are. Let me, um, looks like Hannah Shostak is up next. I've Unmuted you, please just state your name and address so we know you're there. Okay, Hannah Shostak, 146 North 6th Avenue, Highland Park. Um, <clears throat> I um, uh, like to agree, register my agreement with a lot of the comments that have been made so far, Mary, Debbie, um, Lois, etc. And I was trying to think of what else to add to what's already been said, so not to reiterate. Um, as far as the uh, parking lot is concerned, I'm a little mystified as to creating a pedestrian and garage conflict in a residential neighborhood. I, that doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, for years, I've lived in Highland Park since 1983. Um, we've seen people injured by cars. We've, uh, this has been a major issue all over town. And it seems to me that th this makes absolutely no sense. The other thing is that people will be coming and turning on second um, to avoid the Festival Street. And so you're also going to be creating problems at the intersection of Second and Raritan by doing that. Um, other parking studies I've looked at in Princeton in particular um, suggest that people will try to find street parking before they'll park in a garage. 
And so you're going to have people turning on second and looking for parking and the last resort will be the parking garage. So you're going to create all kinds of problems at that end of town uh, with traffic and also with the pedestrian tra conflict at second and Raritan. Um, as far as um, I've researched in the past, the revenues that Princeton gets over a million dollars a year into the municipal court system for parking enforcement, that's really high. We don't, even if you put a meter in, resident, in the residential neighborhoods, I, you're not going to offset the cost of a garage with meters. Um, other places that have built parking garages have used meters and uh, parking enforcement as offsets. I, I can't imagine in Highland Park, you're gonna hire more police and how that's going to work. Um, <clears throat> in other words, without a fiscal analysis to make us understand why this is profitable, this is all has a, an air of unreality about that. Um, same thing, lack of fiscal analysis that we've seen with regard to why you have a redevelopment law in the first place, which authorizes tax abatements, eminent domain development agreements, without seeing any of the financials or statistics, it all sounds great, it's, but it sounds like a little bit like a fantasy. So I wonder, a seconds. specific question is, are we, are we going to see what the plans are and what the fiscal analysis is before you vote on anything? Because how else do you know what you're looking for from the developers? Otherwise we're sitting ducks for, we're not prepared to even negotiate with the developers. Same thing with all of the public service costs that this is going to um, impose on us. Um, firefighting equipment, not just um, firemen, but the equipment itself. Time. So okay. I'm and, concerned. And just, uh, just a brief, um, of course, we're going to be looking at the fiscal analysis of anything that we do. Um, Terry, is there anybody else? Uh, yes, we have, a, I think, two more hands, at least as of this point. Um, uh, next up, Marian Sakharitz. Uh, I'm unmuted you. Please state your name and address. Hi, uh, Marian Sakharitz, 617 South Tits Avenue. So I do want to uh, reiterate some of the points that are in agreement with some of the previous speakers. I do understand that this is a difficult project um, to do redevelop Highland Park because we don't have big tracks. We have a lot of things that already exist. We have to work around a lot of um, pre-existing conditions. But when I'm looking at this plan, I'm seeing that it's very dependent on the parking deck. So if the parking deck is not viable, then the whole concept of the off-site off parking disappears. So. The parking deck is the key to this thing. And apparently, I think the parking, a parking deck in general, to me is cold, unappealing, somewhat dangerous. So um, maintenance and security of this parking deck will be a problem. Uh, the question is also what happens, this is gonna be somewhat expensive to build. So what happens if one or two of these properties are developed and not all of them? which means we might not have the revenue coming in to support the parking deck. So figuring out the details of the parking deck is vital to the going forth of this project. I certainly wouldn't mind if maybe the town had multiple proposals, one with the parking deck and maybe one that we looked at with offsite, with onsite parking for the developments. I realize that we'll have fewer units, but they might be more viable. So what I'm seeing is we're going down a path on a certain set of assumptions. And the key assumption is that parking deck. If that doesn't work, then we've wasted a lot of time and a lot of money. So that's thing one. Thing two is demand. Um, we're saying that there's going to be a high demand because of the proximity to the train station and some public transportation. Um, that assumption was used on the Y property and both of the developments on the Y property had a very difficult time getting going. So, and also I'm seeing in New, New Brunswick, there's a lot of new development. There's a lot of development in Highland Park on Cleveland Avenue. 
There's a lot of development in New Brunswick. 30 Bron seconds. Okay. Um, in New Brunswick on Hamilton Street. So I think some research needs to be done before we go further to see if there's really going to be a demand for all these units we're proposing and how interconnected all this, these four different projects are and if any of them can survive without the others. Thank you. Thank you, Marion. Next, Terry. Yep, uh, let me see. Um, I'm gonna, I see Carl Prey's hand up again, but um, since they've already gone, I'm gonna uh, select Stephen Hambro. Can you please state your name and address? Hi, Stephen Hambro. I'm an attorney. Uh, my office is in uh, South Brunswick, but I live in Highland Park, 317 Grant Avenue, Highland Park. I'm, uh, I've been asked to speak tonight on behalf of uh, Dr. Sudhir Parikh, uh, Parikh Real Estate. Um, I also have represented uh, Julia M. JKI Enterprises LLC, who are um, property owners adjoining Dr. Parikh is at 18 North Third. Um, he owns a building which houses the Park Eye Center, and then he has a medical practice in the rear of the building. Um, he has some major concerns about Third Avenue being closed. He's got a practice there that's uh, a lot of elderly folks. Um, there's got to be access to the facility, to the practice. And um, we have reached out, I've reached out to Terry to try to set up a meeting uh, to speak with uh, Jim Constantine, but we haven't yet scheduled same to address some of these concerns and hear more about what exactly is being planned. Um, I did not hear the entirety of this presentation. I just walked in. So um, if somebody could address the issue of the long-term plan and the closing down of that street and preventing access to those businesses which um, frankly were part of the redevelopment um, and got approval under redevelopment previously. Uh, I don't remember exactly what year it was, but probably around uh, seven, eight years ago, 10 years ago. Um, and those, those properties were developed in accordance with and have development agreements, redevelopers agreements uh, on those properties, on that property. So um, there are some concerns. I know there are other folks who are concerned that I've spoken with as well relating to the uh, density of the development that's being proposed as well. So if somebody could address that, I'd appreciate it. Terry, um, did you want to uh, let Steve know that you'll set up an appointment? Well, in fact, I, I did circle back with uh, uh, both Matt and uh, Phil George, I mean, Phil George, uh, Jim Constantine, I'm looking at Phil, that's why I said that. Um, and we, I do have some dates for you. So just look for your email after this meeting, Steve. Um, and we didn't present any details about the plan earlier tonight. Uh, I just did a quick, more like a timeline update for council. And then we just went right into public comment, but we plan on showing you those maps, you, your, you Dr. Parikh and Julia, uh, and, and kind of weeding into it more detail. But what I would say, since you missed uh, prior meetings, the uh, proposed plaza on North Third, um, while we are proposing as at this point, it be a closed street off of Raritan would not block the driveways associated with uh, Dr. Parikh's uh, facility. So, you know, the, I know there's an in and an out driveway that you're that are associated with there. But um, I guess what I'd say is, hopefully on Friday or Wednesday tomorrow, as soon as then we can talk uh, a little more detail about it. I don't know if you have a more general question I could answer at this point. Terry, is the is the uh, apparently Steve missed the uh, big presentation we did on the plan. Is it on the website? It is, and I, I must, I, I have to confess, it's not in its per permanent home, but right now, if you scroll below the fold on the homepage, there's a what's happening or something to that effect section, and we have it stuck there. It's kind of redevelopment planning underway in Highland Park, and I'm putting all information on public meetings, slides, et cetera, uh, in terms of like video links and things like that there for the time being while I build out 
a more uh, permanent section of the website. But I have shared that with a lot of the folks that have reached out to me, including uh, Steve. So um, hopefully, uh, you know, people take advantage of that time. But um, yeah, uh, I hear you, Steve. We're going to talk a lot more about it. No, I appreciate that, Terry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, you've been great in uh, responding. Um, but I did take a look at the previous um, Zoom meetings, a uh, presentation uh, for this area. Right. It was not really clear to me um, because it did look like at some point there was a long-term plan seconds. for festival type um, events where the entire avenue would be closed down. So I'm not so sure that that was planned just for the weekends or or holidays, uh, non-business hours. So a little clarification probably would go a long Sure, way. there's kind of, two, the, while the whole street and the, the, the graphics are, are kind of shaded as like a textured treatment, um, the part uh, close that adjoins Raritan Avenue um, is the portion that, that starts basically uh, near Provident Bank to Raritan um, is the part that we're imagining would be permanently closed for kind of community use on an ongoing day-to-day -day basis. The full street could be closed potentially for larger festivals, but that would be done very exclusively and with a lot of forewarning for any of the businesses um, and scheduled, but would not, it would generally be open because the entrance to the garage, which would be across the street, at least as is con currently config from the properties you're talking about, um, we need to have access. So um, I, I think I, I could see where you'd have that impression, especially if you didn't actually listen to the whole discussion about it. Cause there's a lot, if you're just looking at the images, you may not, um, that may, and, and our thinking has evolved through this process and continues to do so. And, um, you know, I will probably evolve again after we meet with you and your clients. Uh, so, you know, we'll talk some more about it. Thank you very much. All right, Terry, anybody else? I, I do see Car the only remaining hand is uh, Carl Prey. Do you want me to? Uh, sure. Oh, except I closed, I put the wrong hand down. I have to go find Carl now. Give me a second. There we go. All right, Carl, if it is in fact Carl. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> time it is in fact Carl. Okay, good. So it isn't a double. <laughs> So the, the, I guess the, um, you know, the one thing in all this that uh, is not uh, just being planned and discussed and things like that, but it's already in place, it seems to be at least, the, the purchase of property by the, the borough. Um, and uh, so that, that's not something that's sort of, of uh, coming after more planning and all that, but but uh, as we understand it, you're you're already the borough's already buying property, some of which would be used for this um, for I don't know whether it's the section A or which one of those sections, um, and some of that <clears throat> property that you're buying then of course takes it off the the tax rolls, and so there goes some some rateables and things like that, um, and um, uh, so anyway, I guess I'm just, just curious about, um, what, uh, you know, how you're making decisions on what to buy and what you've already bought and what are the impacts on that right now? That's it. So, um, Carl, several years ago, the council in open discussion, um, passed an ordinance, it may be, I don't know, three, years ago, something like that at this point. Uh, <clears throat> don't quote me on that, I can't remember exactly when. Um, but we passed an ordinance to allow the council to purchase properties uh, for redevelopment or for other uses for the municipality. Um, and any time a piece of property that is deemed worthy of um, the, the, count, the uh, borough owning it, whether it is a property that could become a teen center as uh, happened not long ago, um, or property that could be purchased for redevelopment on the avenue. It is discussed um, amongst the council in open uh, meetings 
and then a vote is taken on whether or not to um, use that ordinance or amend the ordinance to include the purchase of whatever piece of property is involved. Um, so that is the process for the purchasing of the properties that have occurred since the ordinance was passed. Um, and um, in determining what properties um, we want, we think the borough should own, there is a good deal of discussion at open council meetings about the pieces of property. Um, and uh, because the, it is part of an ordinance um, change or modification um, that is part of this bond that allows us to do it, the discussion happens um, in two actually three sessions. One would be a work session where there is no formal action taken. Then there would be a vote on first reading at a council meeting. And then at another council meeting, a vote on second reading. So if you were interested in why the council is purchasing a particular piece of property and each time each case is different, um, the, the discussions are held at those meetings and you can find them on the agendas that are uh, put on the website uh, prior to any meter, meeting so people could determine if they want to attend. Okay. Open. Ask how much it is. So uh, am I still on or not? Uh, is there time left? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. So, so uh, last meeting that we had, we talked about there being some some six million dollars or so that you've already, uh, or was it eight million dollars that you've invested in in properties and stuff no. recently? No, the total bond amount when the ordinance was first passed a few years ago, I believe, may have been for six million dollars, mm -hmm. but that's the maximum that this bond could cover. So whenever a property is purchased, let's say the teen center property. Um, I, I don't remember the exact cost of that property, but the, the, the cost of purchasing that property was put on a council agenda um, as a modification to that particular ordinance that says this ordinance will cover the payment of this particular, that particular piece of property. And um, uh, and that's, that's how it works. The total bond uh, allocated for purchase of properties was originally $6 million. I don't know exactly how much has been spent yet, but I know there's a lot left. Okay, thank you. Okay. One last hand, Mayor. Uh, looks like Harold Sakrowitz, I guess it's the spouse's turn to have an, uh, a moment. <laughs> Harold, uh, could you state your name and address? Uh, Harold Sakrowitz, <laughs> 17 South Fifth Avenue. Hello. Go ahead. Okay, so all right, one thing I'm concerned about is I think towards the end of this process, even if you approve everything, there's going to be some huge collection of zoning ordinances that go along with the avenue. Okay, so I'm wondering what in the world that could be, because there are a lot of other properties on the avenue, and those people can, when they see that their apartment buildings or seven, five story buildings going up, well, they could get together and sell their stuff and do the same thing. Okay, so the question is, what are the zoning ordinance going to be that will, assuming people actually like your project, to keep it that way. So that's one, that's one issue I'd like to know. Another thing is the basic premise a couple of weeks ago was that we need to have more people on the avenue, walking around or whatever. Okay, what's the minimum number of additional people you need to make the avenue vibrant. Okay, it would be nice if just some specifics, even if you're guessing, it would be nice to have some specifics as to what you have in mind and what could possibly happen. I mean, I've been in Highland Park since 1975. When Matt Hale the other day says, 
well, we want to make Highland Park be Highland Park. I have no idea what that means. Okay, it's just time after time what I've seen is Highland Park has very good intentions, but you never get specific enough. And then we always get ourselves into trouble. So I would hire these consultants in addition to coming up with a project that looks good, ask them what could go wrong. Okay, ask them what could some other developer do that would make us very unhappy. Okay, I think, because that is what I've seen in the last 45 years I've been here. I guess that's 30 it. 30 seconds. That's okay, I'll, I'll give somebody else my 30 seconds. Thanks, Harold. Terry, did you want to say something that looked like you wanted to speak? I, I guess the, I, I was going to speak more to Harold's first thought, which was around the zoning question. And maybe I'll let Matt, I saw Matt also raise his hand. Um, the, the, I, I don't know exactly that I totally understood the question, but I'll, I'll, I kind of triggered a point I would like to make. What the redevelopment plan that we're in the process of developing with this comments and input would establish zoning for the tracks that we are studying and including in this area, okay? There is underlying zoning up and down Raritan Avenue, either through the central business district zone, which is the majority of where this area under the, or, or the zoning ordinance, but there's also an, a, pri a prior redevelopment plan that covers several of these areas, which also establishes zoning that developers could have been taking advantage of all along as well. Um, so we are trying to set that now and there'll be some tight controls and the question about what if the garage doesn't happen? What, what if it doesn't happen? You know, what do we do? Uh, I think it was actually Marion's point. Uh, th this version that we're pursuing does see that as a center centerpiece. And we fully admit that if that, if we aren't able to come up with the centralized parking solution for the sites that we're looking to develop that we control, we will have to reevaluate and amend, you know, because if that doesn't happen, clearly we'd have to think about how would we address parking. But this is zoning we're putting into place that would supersede the underlying zoning uh, for these lots. However, it's there's going to be, I wish Joe was on the call because there's going to be a lot of provisos in that plan that will, if the garage fails, this this zoning doesn't happen, you know, things like that. So um, I guess I just wanted to clear that point up, but I also wanted to make the point that people, there is development potential here on these sites right now that, 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 that we're trying to control outcomes to some extent in a way that we feel will be for Highland Park betterment is the goal. I can see we're gonna have differences of opinion, but that's where we're headed. So that's just what I was, that came to mind, but I'll talk, let Matt talk. <laughs> Matt, did you want I, I, to- I'm just gonna add, to add that, that to Terry's point about that what we're doing is an attempt to sort of, one of the things that we're doing is an attempt to, to, to have as much control over this process as, as possible. And, and when I say that I want Highland Park or we want Highland Park to be Highland Park, um, I think that that's down the line when we're talking about um, the types of architecture, the types of design, the types of things um, that, that are years away from, from actually happening. One of the things that we're committed to is, is that it represents Highland Park, that it is not um, a, a something that you could see in another borough, the, something that, that is, is necessarily, it, it may be similar, but something that is um, a, a cookie cutter version of, of, of this. Um, we are focused on trying to create a, a even more of a walkable downtown. Um, and and the, the Festival Street and all of those things are designed around a walkable downtown. And those are all sort of, I think, important values that we're doing our best um, to try and hold on to, while at the same time having a thriving downtown. And right now it's not. And so this is really an attempt to reinvigorate and make our downtown um, uh, uh, much more vibrant and much more usable. And that means more people. And so, um, so 
those are the, the, the you know, 100,000 foot thought processes is that we want to have a unique place of downtown as a walkable um, place with restaurants and shops that are filled um, with people who are willing to um, um, and want to live um, on the avenue. Um, and so um, that's, that's the unique version of this. But as, as we've said again and again, how this develops and how this comes, comes to fruition, um, we are still a long way away from those specifics, um, but we do have those goals um, and that vision. And that's really where we are right now, so. Thank you, Matt. Okay, Terry, anybody else? I think that that's it. All right. Um, I just want to sum up before I ask for a motion to adjourn. Um, uh, by saying again, there will be, we are listening to what people are asking and talking about. This is a very fluid process um, and the, this is a plan or a vision um, that allows us to, once it's, once it's passed, is going to allow us to um, move forward with the lots that have been identified and with discussions about a possible garage um, so that we can, and I think Matt said this well, better control how our downtown develops and make it more what we as a community wanna see. And I, I mean the elected body and the residents, um, what we wanna see happen in our downtown as opposed to what developers have in mind for us. So, um, so just keep that in mind. Keep in mind that we, we are very far from um, uh, shovels in the ground um, and we will keep all of you well advised as, um, uh, as to our next steps as we continue to proceed along the path to downtown development. And having said that, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you all and good night. Good night. Good night. Be Happy well Hanukkah. and be safe. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah to those who celebrate.